What's going on everyone, Brad here, and in this video, I'll show you a quick and simple way to smooth out and refine your subwoofer's house curve using REW and a mini DSP 2x4 HD. And best of all, it only takes a few clicks once you get everything set up. So if you haven't already seen my video series on setting up, time aligning, and EQing your subwoofers using REW and a mini DSP, then I'd highly suggest going over and checking those videos out up to at least part three. And that's because you're going to need some type of house curve or flat curve in place already on your subwoofers using a mini DSP to even try this method. It won't work unless you have one. Now, if you've already watched my entire guide and followed each step and set everything up, including main to sub time alignment, then stick around because I will be going over what you can do to try this method as well. Now, before we dive into REW and get started, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you never miss out on a new upload. Also, be sure to check out my affiliate links in the description below. These don't cost you a dime and help support the channel out when you use them. Now we're about to dive into REW here and get started, but I wanna add real quick that if you're currently going through my mini DSP video series already, you got to part three, you saw the info card on this process in that video, you pause that, to come over here and try this, or maybe you followed the link in the description or comment section or whatever, you're gonna wanna skip this next little section because basically this is all gonna be for people that have already ran through that whole video series, including main to sub time alignment. I'm gonna be walking you through the setup to kinda of get you back to square one to try this method out. So follow the chapter markers in this video or through the description and just skip to the next section. So if you're still here, then let's go ahead and get everything set up so you can follow along with this video as well and try this method. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into your receiver settings and disable any type of room correction. So for me, I'm gonna disable Odyssey, just want that turned off. And then secondly, we wanna go into the speaker section and we wanna change our crossovers to the maximum that they can go. For me, it's 250. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't want the mains to be affecting the readings at all. We don't want any interference from them. All right, so next we wanna hop over into the mini DSP software. Make sure it's connected to your mini DSP. It's not at the default. You'll see this little green check mark saying it's connected. And essentially what we need to do here is we need to remove any type of additional EQ we added after the fact. So you ran through my video series, you probably went in here into the PEQ on the input side and added a few things to smooth without your overall frequency response. Well, this isn't really gonna work because in order for this method to work, we need to take a measurement of our house curve or whatever curve without any additional EQ applied on top of it. We also wanna get rid of this volume adjustment you may or may not have made on the input side of things as well. What I don't wanna do though is edit this main config file. And the reason for that is I just always wanna have this backup in case we need it. So we wanna create a backup of this and we'll load that backup into another config slot. So to do that, just hit file, save, save current configuration. I'll just label this main config backup. So now I just need to go to a free config slot. And this is gonna be different for you, but for me, it's gonna be config four. I have a couple of different things on these I don't wanna mess with. So to switch over to that, we'll select file, load, load configuration to current slot, main config backup, wait for that to sync up. All right, just click okay when you get this message. And then now we can go in here, edit this, and then we can always revert back to config one if we want to, or we can just reload that backup file we created. So first thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna remove this volume adjustment I made there. If you have one, go ahead and just put that at zero. And then for the PEQ, we could go through and bypass each one, but that's actually not gonna work because when we load an EQ file in here from REW, it's already going to be bypassed again. So the easiest way to do this is you just go in and zero every single one out that you made adjustments to. I know it's a little tedious, but it should go re really quick and you only have 10 bands total to adjust and everything else here is fine. We're good there. You can go ahead and close that, go to outputs here. And the final thing we wanna do is we want to remove any type of additional delay we added when we did our main to sub integration. Basically we wanna do that because anytime we adjust the EQ at anywhere near the crossover point, that main to sub time alignment is gonna need to be redone. It's gonna create some issues unless you do it otherwise. You can try it. Uh, I've tried it multiple times this way with the time alignment stuff still in the software and I got a massive dip at my crossover point and I had to redo the main to sub time alignment anyway. 
So I just decided to go ahead and zero everything out here. So I know here I added a 4.76 delay to every single one. Yours is gonna be different, obviously. You just have to know what it was before you added that delay. So for this one, I know this was zero. So I know that one's gonna be zero. 4.76 minus 8.96 is 4.2. And then 12.76 minus 4.76 is Eight. So now everything is squared away there. We would just want to make sure that the overall level in the receiver is good. And the easiest way to do that is use a generator in REW. So click on generator and then click on SPL meter. And my cat's going crazy back here. All right, so in the tone generator, we just want to make sure speaker cal is selected under noise and pink random. And then just use these settings for default on the SPL meter. Just hit play and we're gonna adjust the overall volume of the receiver using the remote to where it reads 75 dB. All right, so everything is good to go, set up, and we're ready to take a measurement. And this measurement is really important because it's basically what we're going to use in REW to apply an additional EQ. So we'll just click on measure. I'll label this baseline measure and 10 to 250 is okay. Minus 12 dB is okay. Settings uh, for length 256K is okay. And then we'll just use the left output. So I'll go ahead and click start. All right, so this is our baseline measurement here. Not too shabby. This is the house curve I originally set up. No additional EQ or anything applied. And you can see it spits pretty good. From 20 Hertz to 30 Hertz, we have around 85 decibels and it slopes down around 75 decibels at 100 hertz, which is exactly what I wanted. But you can see it's not really smooth. Now, again, this is with no additional EQ applied. Uh, this is a little room mode here that uh, I can't EQ out. So even doing this method won't get rid of that. Just be aware of that. But what we can do is use REW's EQ function to smooth this out more automatically for us. You take this measurement, you go ahead and click on EQ here, maximize this for maximum screen space. We'll make sure we adjust a couple settings here. So under equalizer, we wanna make sure mini DSP 2x4 HD is selected. Under target settings, uh, we want the base management cutoff to be something really high. Just put 850. I don't want that really doing anything. For the LF cutoff, we want this set to zero. We don't really want it doing anything. And then for our room curve, we do want this selected. So basically I'm gonna do the same room curve that I did before, which is 20 to 30 hertz, we have around 85 decibels, and then it slopes down to 75 decibels around 100 hertz. So from 30 to 100, it's sloping down gradually. So to add that house curve like I mentioned, the LFE rise start, we wanna change that to 100. The LFE rise end, we wanna change that to 30. And then we wanna bring this up so we have a 10 decibel increase. So basically we're gonna max this out. And you'll see here around this blue line, which is our target, we got 75 decibels here, and then around 85 decibels there, so that's perfect. So now what I wanna do is I wanna bring this down a little bit so it's not kind of above it, and you can kind of play around with this. Normally I try to go under a little bit. So for the target level, I'm gonna try 72 real quick. And just super easy, you can go ahead and copy these filter task settings here. And basically from 15 to 105 hertz is what we're EQing. The individual max boost is five, overall max boost is 10, flatness target set to one. Just go ahead and click on this match response to target. If you see this little dialog box pop up, that's okay. It just means that most of this is above this, which is kind of what, what you want. We're, we're rather cut than boost. So click okay. And you'll see it snap to the target there. If I turn the target off and highlight the predicted, which is normally pretty accurate. See how much smoother it is versus this one, which is the baseline measurement. So what we can do is go ahead and save filter coefficients to file and just put it in a folder that you'll remember. Like I said, I created a folder just for this video. So we'll name it 72 dB because that is what we have here for the target level. And we'll just label this input PEQ. We'll click on save and we'll minimize this. Don't close that out just yet in case we want to edit it further. And then we pop over to the mini DSP software, go to inputs and routing, click on parametric EQ and make sure advanced is selected and select import. Now just find that file wherever you saved it. So for me, it's right here. Open it up and look at that. All of the EQ parameters, just like with the house curve are put in here. So if we go back to REW and do a measurement here to see what we get, we'll label this 72 dB first EQ attempt. You can label it whatever you want, just something that you'll remember. All the settings remain the same, so just go ahead and click start and we'll take this measurement. 
So if we take a look and compare it to our baseline measurement, you see, yeah, the volume's reduced. We're not really concerned with that right now, but we wanna take a look at the line here of EQ. It actually is relatively flat from 20 all the way to 30 Hertz. And then it slopes down gradually exactly what we want down to about 100. And remember, we still have that little null there. Can't really do anything about it, but overall, if we zoom in even more, you can see it's quite a bit of difference. Now, the great thing with this process is, and this method is, we can go back and we can create another EQ really quickly and try that one out. Doesn't really take much time at all. So remember how I said, don't close that window. Well, let's go ahead and open it back up. You can just click on EQ. And then you go, whoa, wait a minute, what happened? All the settings are different. It's not what I remember. It's not what I adjusted. Just make sure that your baseline measurement is selected. Remember, that's the one we're EQing. As soon as you select that and open up the EQ again, it's gonna be right back to where it was. All your settings are gonna be retained over here. So for this, let's say we wanna try 73. So bring that up a decibel. Uh, you might wanna select this target thing if you're a numbskull and, and unchecked it like me. We change to 73, hit match response to target click OK, and then we'll just save that filter coefficient to file. And a quick little tip, if you select that one, don't save over it. All that stuff is input for you already. So just change the 72 and 73, click on save. Perfect, now you just saved a second EQ file that you can load up really quickly and test out. So again, to do that, go to the mini DSP, hit on PEQ and click on import. And then we'll go ahead and import the 73 dB. And look at that, we've changed that. And we can go ahead and go back and take another measurement. And we'll just change that 72 there to 73. All right, so if we compare it, we'll turn the baseline measurement off, compare the two. Obviously the 73 is gonna be about a decibel higher. Makes sense, 72 to 73 decibels. It's negligible in terms of is it better or not. Each has their own sets of issues. Select the one that you feel is best. I would probably select maybe this one because it's flatter down here and less of a bump. But honestly, this is stuff you probably won't even notice. But so for the sake of argument, let's say your first attempt that you did, you like that one better. So all you have to do is go back into the mini DSP, click on import, select that 72 dB input, and there you go, it's loaded back in. So you don't even really need to do another measurement here because you have already measured it. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that that volume is correct, right? So you don't want this because this isn't what the house curve is set up for. It's meant to be about 85 decibels. So in order to do that really easily, take a look at what this bottom number is here. So around 20 Hertz, we're at 82 we need to go up to 85. So let's go ahead and just add three decibels here and do another measurement and see what we get there. So I'll label this plus three dB. Okay, so that is pretty much right on the money there. 85 decibels at 20 Hertz, right down to 30. And then as we slope down around 100, we're at 75, 75 and a half, give or take. So that is perfect in really, really simple. And you could do that multiple times, multiple iterations. So you could play around, really tweak it to your liking. All right, so once you've got everything dialed in to perfection, or at least you're happy with it and you're good with it, then you're gonna wanna re-enable Odyssey. You're gonna wanna re-enable what your crossovers were at before. And you will probably need to redo the main sub time alignment that you followed in a previous video of mine. If you haven't, check that out. That's uh, very helpful and get you great frequency response all the way across the board. You can maybe try the numbers that you had before if you've already done that, uh, but in my experience, that always resulted in a massive dip around the crossover point, like to the point where it was extreme that I wouldn't recommend it. But, you know, give it a shot if you remember what your numbers were. Now, why would you wanna go with this method over the manual method that I spoke about previously and also covered in one of my mini DSP videos? Well, there honestly really isn't a good reason other than it does achieve similar results and can save you a bit of time. But as with most things that save you a bit of time, you actually lose something in return. And here, that is the ability to manually and easily go in and adjust specific frequencies up and down to your liking. Now, I say easily because you can actually go in to the text file that REW creates, the EQ file, and adjust those parameters manually and get similar results, but you can also do it in the mini DSP as well. However, this does take a bit more time and you can actually make things worse instead of better, but not anything that can't be undone. So it's kind of a toss up. Now, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider hitting that like button. Also, have you tried this method? What were your results? And did it actually help or did it make things worse? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. 